okay. So I'm working on my games cabinet and it all starts with a doodle. Let's try again. I'm taking a kind of original arcade cabinet kind of style and I'm making it much more angular and zigzaggy. And the idea this is going to be based on a, um, uh, an animation my son did called Storm Rock Hotel where there's lightning bolts all the way through it. And so I want a kind of lightning bolt design. And here it is labeled with the different areas, the marquee area at the top which glows. I've got a 19 inch screen, which is there. That's what I'm going to be using. Penny's come along and doodled this one, which uh, annoyingly I quite like as well. So we're going to have to think about that. Okay, what I've done now is I've done a kind of side view. I've made it slightly, um, slightly less deep because I don't want to have it protruding into the room too much. And what I've done is I've measured my rough drawing and I've sort of scaled it to be around about 180 centimeters in height. And I've roughly worked out the dimensions of each point. These looked a bit like right angles or close to right angles. So I made them, <coughs> made them right angles because they're a lot easier to join together. Um, the back will be open and it will be attached to the wall. So it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit front heavy. Penny worked out that if we just altered the dimensions slightly, we could get it out of one single sheet of plywood. So I've sort of shallowed it up a bit. I've altered the dimensions ever so slightly. Um, so it's basically the same design, but a little bit more shallow. So that would be the side panel. The cool thing about designing something to scale, even if, you know, it can be quite accurate, but that's, that's one temp scale. So I know if I just scale up by 10, that's my cut measurements. And there you have it. I put the screen on there just to show what the screen size would look like. That's fairly accurate. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to building it. Now to order the wood. What I've done is I've worked out I can get it out of a 2.4 meter by 1.22 meter piece of wood. And I can ask them to cut it into three bits to make life easier for me as well. I keep looking at this and it's been sort of sat on the sideboard for a couple of days now. And I've decided I don't really like it. I think the top marquee area up here is, is too big, it's too prominent, and it just looks a bit out of whack, so I'm going to redesign it. Okay, so that one on the right, that's the original one that I was complaining about, and this is one I've slightly redesigned. All I've done really is just sort of uh, make the screen area a little bit more vertically tall, which shrinks down the marquee to a much more manageable size. It's still got the kind of zigzaggy pattern on the side, not as pronounced, but I kind of lost that aesthetic design in favor of it, just looking a little bit more sort of usable from the front. Should be quite good. So I'm gonna ask that guy to do a design on it and uh, just sort of give you a rough impression of what it might look like. And this is what he's come up with. I've asked him to do a sixth door themed cabinet. So there's the Lego on the top there. And uh, obviously this is very rough. He's got Michael from Storm Rock Hotel on the side and uh, all the odd characters that have formed the lore of the sixth door animation series and uh, Storm Rock Hotel and whatnot. I would urge you to go and check out the sixth door YouTube channel. It is amazing. So uh, I'm going to try and mark this out on this single side panel, then use that as a template for the other side panel, and then we're away. I've got it up on this table, uh, and what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, these sort of points where there's an, uh, an intersect point, so where there's a, a change in angle, and I've measured at what point on the length that occurs. So there's a few different numbers there, and I'm gonna mark using this tape measure, each of those points. So effectively you've got a line you can put your ruler on to get the, the intersecting angle at the exact, exact the right point. I'm not explaining myself particularly well, but that's the smart way to do it. I've been reliably informed. 
So I mentioned that kind of design aesthetic I was trying to capture, that kind of zigzag, which I've kind of lost in that design a little bit. Well, the funny thing is actually after marking it out on the wood, I've actually expanded a few lines, uh, most, most importantly, this one here, uh, which basically means I get back a bit more of a jaggedy feel to it, which was part of the original design. So the good thing about marking it all out is you can stand the piece of wood up, work out where it will come to. You can put your kids in front of it and work out where their hands are in relation to the controllers, where their eyes are in relation to the screen and really get it spot on. This is the screen I'm gonna be using. So I was able to sort of lay that on the wood and actually see exactly where it, it ends up. Anyway, slight changes in plan, but that's no bad thing. I've stood it up, marked out where the panels are. That's the marquee area, that's the screen area, down to the control area, down to the floor. I have my son modeling it. Hello, son. And I can see that actually it works very well. His screen is in line with his eyes. Uh, the controller works well. I think I've increased this angle here. Uh, sorry, this length here from that right angle. And even though I've done that, it doesn't obscure his view of the controller. So I think aesthetically and practically that works. I've cut that one side. And what I've done now is I have laid it over the other side, the other piece of wood, and I'm gonna draw around it. Uh, so I get an exact copy. When cutting and using a table as a support, um, remember not to uh, cut a bloody great hole in the table because it annoys your wife. Okay, I've clamped it together uh, so it won't move too much. That's both side panels clamped together. I'm gonna use this mouse sander just to go along the edges and make sure that the profile is precise. With the panels all cut, the next job really is to work out how to put the, the structure in between, the fascia. Um, so this is a little bit trickier because you have to work out what butts up to what. I've got some funny angles, so you know, am I going to be able to plane it or sand it to get the join nice? So you just kind of have to work out by measuring it, you know, what butts up against what, what goes behind what, and, and work it out from there. And once I've done all this, hopefully I'll have some plans I can share. But this is a bit kind of a bit kind of random. You have to sort of look at what you've got and then measure what you've got because obviously your cuts might not be spot on accurate. Uh, but yeah, let, let's uh, move on to the next stage. So if you look down here, I've marked on here six mil line. And six mil is significant because it's halfway between the 12 mil thickness of this wood. And so that's where I need to drill a hole so I'm going to drill the hole on the outside panel using this, uh, I don't know what it is, 5mm drill bit or 4mm drill bit. And these are 4mm screw screws. So you use a pilot hole on the adjoining face and you use the, the bigger one on the outside face. And the idea then is that the screws will go through the side panel and pull up on these and it will make it more strong. So that line tells me where to put the outside holes. Because of my slightly obsessive compulsive nature, I have carefully measured the uh, drill holes uh, so that they are exactly the same on each side. Even though you'll never see each side at the same time, I would know, I would just know that they weren't accurate. All the holes drilled. Now to countersink them to hide the screw heads. This is a countersink bit. And that's a countersunk hole. I have fixed some of the uh, front panel pieces and uh, I've just done that to one side panel. I'm going to flip it over and attach the other side panel now. We are ready to erect the Device, I said erect, aha. Ta-da, you can see it now. <laughs> it's taking shape. From imagination to reality. 
to reality. Before I started making the cabinet, I created this test board just to make sure that the joystick and the buttons all worked and functioned correctly. This one's built for a left-handed and a right-handed player to play together. Um, I tested it, it works perfectly, but now I've got to work out how to map these buttons onto my cabinet over there. Um, it's a little bit trickier than you might think. So what I've done is I've, I've made a template here of the board area I'm trying to uh, work with, and I've made these little cutout paper buttons, and I'm gonna try and figure out where to put things so that I get the best and most optimal positioning. Well, in the words of Mahatma Gandhi, this was a complete ball leg. -like. Honestly, mapping all this out, measuring it, trying to get everything in the right place. I use these things here to, these little cutouts to get the buttons exactly where I want them. And then I kind of create a map to work out how to locate them in the 2D space as it were. And if I remove these little paper buttons, you can see underneath I have drill holes. So now I have a template with which to mark where I need to drill. This is a spade bit. And this is a spade bit. And here we have it. One holy board. We've got a little piece of wood here to raise this platform up. I've attached both joystick units now which uh, look rather nice. Now we've just got to uh, attach the buttons. They go on reasonably simple. You push the button in from the other side like so. Plastic nut and you spin it up until it's nice and tight. That's all of them in. So now the job of wiring them all up. There we have it, all wired up. What a mess. That's as neat as I can make it look. Here's what the other side looks like. I haven't tightened them all the way up, so there's a little bit of movement and play so I can get them into exactly the right position. So it's all plugged in and nicely glowing away, and I've just been testing it on the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. The job I'm really not looking forward to is cutting out the marquee in the screen area. I've put them on the table here, so these are these are the holes I've got to cut out, I've marked with pencil. Um, the problem is, I don't have a jigsaw, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. The hard way, I think. Right, that was a complete nightmare. I don't even want to talk about how I managed to do that without a jigsaw. I'll leave it to your imagination. Bloody nightmare. There we have it, lying down with all the holes. I'm giving a going over with the old mouse sander just to smooth off any uh, any naughty edges, and then uh, I will be priming it. Stupid mistake number one: I should not have put the buttons and joystick on the wood until I had primed the wood. Luckily, I have a patient wife who's willing to paint now between the buttons because it's too much effort to undo all that. Ah. Well, uh, Penny pretty much rage quits that one, so I'm having to take it all off again. <sighs> right, I'm gonna stick a bit of primer on the main cabinet now. Hello, and welcome to my garage. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, so this is what I've done. I decided to spray paint it copper. How cool is that? Really? reflective and awesome looking. I've um, stuck on a, a coat of uh, gloss all over this. I'm just about to do the uh, second coat now. And uh, yeah, then we'll be ready to sort of put it all together. Quite exciting. Here's the cabinet. It has two coats of gloss on it. It's looking rather nice. Finish is looking great. I've managed to cover up the screw holes. And my son has designed the marquee, the sixth door logo. Now we need to work out a way of lighting it. So what I've done is I've got some of these cheap LED strip lights, which uh, are sold on Amazon to put behind your television and things like that. 
Um, they come with a remote control. And what I've done is I've glued it onto a piece of Perspex. Uh, and you'll see it makes a, an effective light board, which obviously you can change colors as well if you want to. But I'm just gonna have it on white just to illuminate the marquee. As you can see, I've wired up some LEDs and this is effectively behind the monitor area. So it'll give an eerie red glow when the uh, system is on. I've attached the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B there and the sound output goes into that mini amplifier which goes down to a kind of haptic vibration speaker which makes the whole cabinet vibrate. Sends the vibrations up into the control board as well so you can feel a bit of feedback. There's the USB that's powering it all. And I've uh, illuminated the marquee, which is this area here, with my LEDs all attached to that piece of Perspex. The screen is in and it's basically ready to go. Now the paint work, the paint job, we're gonna leave until a little bit later on because Rip needs a little bit more time to work on that design. And it's gonna take a little while for us to paint it onto the cabinet. Let me show you what I've done. 